Coach Jimmy Robertson. How you doing, man? Doing great. Doing great. How you doing? I'm excellent, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I say us. It's just me today. Uh, Coach Cross couldn't make it in today, but uh, truly excited about having you on. How's everything your way? Everything's going great. Really appreciate you taking some time to have me on. Excited to talk some football with you and, you know, whatever else we talk about. No doubt, man. Well, we're going to we're going to talk about football and uh, talk about a lot of things. And interestingly enough, we're going to talk about a little trip to Germany that you had early on in your uh, in, in your career, I guess. I mean, it's kind of the beginning of your uh, transition to your coaching career, but still in your plan days. Um, you you played in the German football league, you know, i I'm always curious about the, the the coaches that take an opportunity to go over overseas and, and play football because I know that that is so unique in terms of the, the the knowledge that's there already on those coaching staffs. I know some players have had the opportunity to play and coach and all that good stuff. So could you talk to us a little bit about, you know, how that came about, what that experience was like, and, you know, if there was anything there that helped you as a coach? Yeah, that was a phenomenal experience. Had the opportunity to play for two seasons over there right at the end of my senior year of college. Um, got contacted to go over to the German Football League, so took advantage of it, and it was a life-changing opportunity. And that's what the game of football can do for us. You know, I, I was never in Europe or Germany prior to that and haven't been back since, so football was able to bring me over there, really changed my life, opened up, you know, your perspective on a lot of different things. You see how important American football is to people throughout the world, you know, and keep in touch with a lot of the, the guys over there you know, was influenced a lot, you know, my philosophy, some of the coaches I had over there, right. you know, players that I played with. So it was definitely a phenomenal experience and, you know, one that has definitely helped shape who I am today. And weren't you kind of flip-flopping a little bit? Weren't you international league in the spring and then you would come over and coach QBs at RPI in the fall? Uh, that's got to be, yeah. that's got to be interesting, you know, knowing two playbooks at the same time and, <laughs> you know, trying, trying oh, to yeah, turn that, that was on and off. Definitely a unique experience. I went, just as I was finishing up my senior year, went over, played the first year, and then came back and was getting my master's at RPI and was the assistant QB coach. I guess I was a, a grad student assistant. Right. So coach for the season and then went back over to Germany for my second season because the seasons were opposite right. uh, parts of the year. Man, that, that's that got to be an awesome experience just to be able to still put, put the pads on and, you know, kind of get scratch that itch a little bit and then come and, and develop this new itch in, in coaching, man, and, and uh, cutting your teeth and learning a lot of football, I would imagine. Um, oh, yeah. But transitioning forward a little bit, you know, you spent some time at Merchant Marine Academy, and uh, you actually took a very <laughs> – this is a unique podcast right here because we're already talking about Germany. Now we're going to talk about tennis on, on the AFCA football podcast. <laughs> we're going to talk about tennis. You were the head – tennis coach as well as uh, the quarterbacks coach over at Merchant Marine Academy. Uh, what was that experience like for you to coach tennis? And also, uh, how, how has maybe that experience helped you as you, you know, recently taken this role as head coach or, you know, even, even as you just were coaching positions afterwards? Yeah, that was another unique opportunity. And getting to coach at a federal service academy like the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy was a life-changing experience in and of itself. Right. But then to have the opportunity in my last two years there, I was there for four years total, to be the head tennis coach, you know, really opened up my eyes to a lot of different things and prepared me for the role I'm in now as the head coach at FDU because of all the other things you had to do, the alumni stuff, the administrative stuff. So it definitely prepared me, although it was tennis, you know, being in the role of the, the head coaching position definitely helped me for the role I'm in now and helped prepare me for, you know, some of those things that, until you actually get those things to come across your desk, you can never truly be prepared for them. You know, so it was definitely a fun experience. You know, we had um, two pretty good seasons. Some of our, our players were really good and, you know, helped change that program. So that was definitely a, a fun experience for me. That's awesome. Now, now I got to ask how you fell into that role. Like, what, what was that situation? The job was open and they just asked you or what, you know, what happened? Yeah, so that's pretty much what it was. The, the position came open. And as a, a full-time government employee there, I was coaching just the quarterbacks. And then they asked me what I want to take on this role. And, you know, it was something I, I took full steam ahead. Really, my only background in tennis had been I played tennis growing up a little bit. Um, so when they asked me, I, I, I took it full steam head on and, you know, made the most of it. And it was two great years, two awesome, <laughs> phenomenal years. Well, uh, as my role as director of coaching education, like, you know, it's truly important to me, number one, to have like podcasts like this where you just get coaches on. Everybody talks about their journey. But somebody out there is listening and they're 
they have some similarities. They have something that uh, maybe resonates with them and, and helps them down their path. And so, uh, you know, at the convention, you want to make sure you got all these different types of offenses and defensive schemes and uh, philosophies and things like that. So uh, one more question regarding tennis, you know, yeah. you take the job. What was that professional development like? Because like you said, you played a little bit, you know, growing yeah. up, but no way that prepares you to coach some college <laughs> college kids that, you know, they want to do this. They they're serious yeah. about this. So what was that immediate like, oh, man, you know, I got to go. I got to go learn about this. What was your first steps? Oh, yeah, it was a humbling experience because we had some good players. We had my second year, we had the rookie of the year in the conference. We had two first team all leaguers. So we had some some players that were, you know, elite level division three tennis players. So it was humbling, you know, learning from them. Right. You know, and I think the, the biggest thing was they show they saw how much I cared about them and how much I cared about the program and how much I wanted for them to be successful on the court and off the court. And I think that was the biggest thing. It was bringing that energy into the program, right. bringing the structure and the alignment into the program. But then, like you said, doing some of the other professional development things, because you do want to be on the top of your game, just like every coach, whether it's tennis, football, or any sport. You want to know everything that you can about the, the sport and about your players. So definitely a humbling experience, but one that enabled me to grow so much, you know, for all the other things, you know, just like off the field, off the court. It was all those other things that I really grew through right. it. Well, that's awesome that you mentioned that. Uh, bringing that energy and passion, you know, those things that I, I think all coaches are known for, but particularly football coaches kind of, kind of, yeah. or I, I think are a different breed when it comes to that. And uh, I wouldn't imagine a bunch of tennis coaches probably, <laughs> probably bring that type of energy. And so that was probably pretty cool for those guys to experience that and uh, be excited about it. It was because they saw I cared just as much about that as I did coaching football there. And right. You know, our, our pregame or pre-match warm-up was probably more similar to a football warm-up. You know, some of the breakdowns we did, all those things probably emulated football more so than, you know, traditional tennis. But the the players loved it. And then they, you know, that energy was contagious. So it was a lot of fun. No doubt. Well, Coach, I, I had the opportunity to kind of dive into some of your uh, offensive philosophy, your offensive schemes as a, as a coordinator there at FDU. And, man, I, I was intrigued. I was blown away. Uh, you know, just listening to you speak about it, your knowledge base. And, you know, I definitely don't want to get into exactly what you do, because hopefully at some point we we will get to dive in that a little bit more, you know, at a later date. But um, I, I just would be curious, kind of, you know, what what is your background in, in, in this passing game come from? How has it fared for you to not, you know be a successful offensive coordinator there in your division that you're at now? But, uh, you know, be, be consistently good at, at throwing the ball around. Yeah. Probably starts with my background as a quarterback, playing quarterback all my life, um, then at RPI in college, then over in Germany. And then some of the coaches I had, some of my coordinators and quarterback coaches, it probably starts there with that foundation. You know, and it's something that going back to that energy and passion, you know, the quarterback position, the passing game, something that I love and am passionate about. You know, and it's something that's the foundation of our offense here at FDU. You know, we're a high-flying, up-tempo you know, RPO air raid style system. And it's a fun system for a quarterback to play in. The quarterback has a lot of responsibility, but it probably starts with my background, you know, and then everyone, you know, follows suit with that. And, you know, it's a, a high flying offense. That's a, a lot of fun to be a part of. No doubt, coach. And, uh, you know, it's kind of leads me to, to the next question a little bit. Obviously, you've had the success there. I, I know those kind of offenses are fun. Number one, to watch. They're fun to be a part of uh, for the players and all that good stuff. So. After this past season, um, you, you were tagged with the interim head coach, and so you were responsible for the program in that December, January, February time frame. And as they were doing the search, uh, they decided to call you in there and pull that tag off. And I'm just really curious, you know, I, obviously you talked a little bit about what you do on the football field, but, you know, in those three months, those are those are vital for a program. It's recruiting. It's uh, <laughs> getting kids taking care of business, filling, finishing out that uh, that fall semester strong you know, seeing who's coming back, you know, all, all, just all those little things that you don't even really think about half the time. Um, what did you do to, uh, I guess, get com give confidence to the athletic director, anybody that was on that search committee, the student athletes, uh, mm -hmm. not just in football, uh, just the student athletes across the campus, but more importantly, student athletes in that football program to trust you to be, be the full-time head coach? Yeah, I, I was blessed to get the interim tag, you know, and super fortunate that our athletic director, Jen Noon, and our associate athletic directors gave me that opportunity. And then once we got that opportunity, myself and some of the other coaches that were on staff, we took it and ran with it. They told us, hey, this, this is your guys' program right now. 
we're doing a national search, you know, and you're a candidate, but it's your program for the time being. So take it and run with it. So we, we took it and ran with it. All the initiatives we wanted to put in place for the players, for the alumni, as you said, that's a critical time in football, especially at the division three level. Right. We had the semester ending, which we restructured some of the things we were doing and set a team GPA for um, GPA, a record. We revamped some of the recruiting because it happened right in the, the prime of recruiting season. And then some of the other player development things, we kind of restructured a couple things and our athletic directors and search committee, they saw it. They saw that we weren't just sitting on an interim tag and hoping for the best. They saw that we had this opportunity. We need to make the most of this opportunity. And every single day was an, an on-the-job interview. And, and that's how I approached it. That's how our entire coaching staff that was on board with us at that time approached it. You know, and just with that relentless mentality that this is, this is going to be our job. We're going to show them why it has to be our job. You know, we took it and ran with it. That's awesome, Coach, because I've, you know, I haven't been around too many interim situations, but I've been around two or three. And oftentimes it's kind of more more of the same. Uh, and I, I don't mean that in a negative way, but, you know, you, you don't want to go too crazy and just kind of rebrand the whole thing. But, you know, you went out there and just kind of said, hey, you know, I'm putting my I'm putting my sticker on it. And, uh, you know, <laughs> if, if the sink is going to ship, it's going to ship. Doing it, uh, it's going to sink the way, you know, we want it to, to go. And that's awesome, man. Um, now, you, you get the interim tag taken off in February of 2020, and uh, about a month later, things get crazy in, in the United States of America, obviously, with the with the pandemic and, you know, just some of the other things that have been going on over this past year. And I know you've been probably chomping at the bit for the opportunity to get your first game as a head ball coach under your belt, but, uh, you know, it, it didn't play out that way this year. How have you taken advantage of this situation? And, uh, you know, maybe what are some of the unique things that you've been able to doing recruiting as uh, you know, you've been probably at home a little bit more, or haven't been able to get the kids on campus as much as you wanted to. So that's kind of a two part question. Once again, uh, you know, taking advantage of the situation and then unique things in recruiting. Yeah. I think it all started when we got the interim tag, how we, you know, and you just said rebranding or branding a minute ago, we kind of rebranded the entire program, you know, day one, when we were, were named the interim coaching staff, rebranded it under our fast five-star system of success, really started changing the culture and laying that foundation. So, you know, a couple months into it now, get named head coach, then the pandemic hits. We had already laid that foundation of the culture that we wanted here at FDU. And our, our players, our student athletes were fully bought in on it. Our entire program was aligned in one direction. So I think that foundation we laid those first couple months really set the tone for the, you know, the coming five, six, seven months, even into the time we're in right now. Right. Um, and then we, we had to take advantage of the unique opportunity. You know, we tell our players all the time and coaches throughout the country say, you know, control what you can control. Right. We can't control the pandemic. What we can control is, you know, how relentless we are. We can control living our culture. We can control holding ourselves to those high standards and expectations that we have as an FDU football program. And that's what we've done. And we've taken advantage of the opportunity, doing some different things, some unique things a lot of player development things that we wouldn't have done if we were in a full season right now because right. we wouldn't have had the time to do it. You know, so I think developing the full player overall from the academic, the football, the physical, the professional, and the mental areas, those are the five areas we're going to develop our players in. We've been able to really focus on all five of those equally right now, not having a full season, you know, which is a, an exciting time because it's, you know, a unique opportunity in these unique times that we need to take advantage of. There's, there's no doubt, man. And, uh, you know, one of the interesting things, especially if you're not at, honestly, with some of the higher level FBS programs, it's really hard to get your kids to be on campus in the summertime. I'm talking about, you know, pandemics mm -hmm. not here, you know, uh, just having those kids for June and July. You start talking about getting hired in February and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just a quick two months before they're gone for two months and, yeah. and it's football mode. So uh, it's just, just getting that opportunity to bond with those players, I'm sure has been huge uh, and, and a great opportunity for not just you, but coaches all across the country to, you know, peel back, oh, yeah. put the pigskin aside for a little bit and and just get to, you know, see what's inside the hearts of your players and let them see what's inside of your heart, man. So that, that's really exciting. It, it really is. And, you know, getting, as you said, into the hearts of your players, our core values are here are to be a real family and that R E A L is respect, energy, accountability, and love that allows us to be real. Right. And then that realness allows us to be a family. So, you know, we've really been focusing on, on what you said there, you know, getting into the hearts of our players and really building those relationships with them because the, the wins on the field will come 
if we have that, you right. know, and that, that's a lot of fun and exciting for us. No doubt, man. Well, that's great that you've been able to uh, see the silver line in, in this situation and take advantage of it. Um, but last thing before I let you go here, you made mention of that fast five star uh, in relation to basically that kind of program philosophy. And I know you were uh, fast with, with implementing it. I know uh, February to March, uh, was one month to kind of kind of get it going before everybody dispersed and I'm sure you kept it up but uh that thing has really kind of kind of blossomed into something that you your players all believe in are bought in bought into and mm -hmm. actually had a kind of a showcase on November 1st of this uh of, of this yep. month and so kind of mm -hmm. talk about how those two things correlate if you don't mind uh in regards to recruiting and your actual program itself yeah yeah so fast five star as you said it's our system of success and it started when I was offensive coordinator here and kind of built over the last you know year or two, and then when I became head coach, it became the system for the entire program. And it's all encompassing. It's our brand that we rally around. You know, it's that DNA and infrastructure of the program. And the, as you said, it's something that the whole team can get excited about. It has our core values, our culture, our standards, our mission, our vision, and it's all aligned in that one direction. But it also is the the over overall theme and brand of our program. Because as you said, then then we even expanded it. You know, it's recognizable now. FBU football, fast five stars on social media. It's our hashtag. As you said, we had a, a showcase on November 1st. Um, you know, actually, it was up in New York. We're in New Jersey, but we held it in New York because New York and Connecticut, are, they don't have high school seasons right now. So it was kind of a, a win-win. We held a, a showcase. You know, we weren't the only college there. We had about 15 colleges represented there, giving those student athletes an opportunity to showcase themselves. But it was the fast five star brand, you know, so it has been you know, exponentially great in recruiting for us, you know, because it's just so recognizable. FDU football and Fat Five Star you know, interconnected. Coach, that's awesome, man. Um, I look forward to, to learning more from you, and not not only on the field, but off the field. This, you know, this is great stuff. And and I love seeing coaches kind of kind of come up with something that's unique to them that that can resonate within their program and, and can get people bought into. And that's, that's great stuff coaching. So uh, for anybody that might be listening here, they would probably love to kind of keep up with you, maybe ask some more questions about, you know, anything that we've covered here today or, or, or just keep up with your program. If you wouldn't mind dropping your social media uh, account so they can just keep up with you or ask you a question. Yeah. Yeah. would love to connect with everyone on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Jim Robertson, QB, J I M. R O B E R T S O N Q B Twitter and Instagram. Would love to connect, as I said, with with all coaches. You know, thank you again. L love what you're doing with the podcast. Listen to it on my my drive in uh, every week. So you know, appreciate you having me on here today. <laughs> well, we appreciate you, Coach Robertson, and uh, you know, best of luck here as, as uh, we continue to work towards the season, maybe in the spring, and uh, as, as recruiting continues to go forward. We appreciate you. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right, Coach.